What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to GNR Frank. My name is Francisco, and today is a special day. So for the longest time, I've had quite a few ask me, hey, uh, what kind of setup do you use? What is your setup arranged like? Do a setup tour. What kind of gear do you use? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what better time than now to go ahead and share my setup with all of you. So without further ado, welcome to my setup tour. Let's go. All right, ladies and gents, so here's the deal. I'm gonna walk you through my setup and my, my gaming slash streaming slash podcasting setup, all the equipment that I use. I'm gonna let you know how much they cost me for a grand total cost at the end of the whole video. Now, a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind, okay? So number one is I accumulated all of this gear over the years of me doing content creation. I started at the release of the PlayStation 4. So I've been at it for about like six or seven years now, okay? Uh, number two, some of these things uh, are pieces of equipment that you might actually really and urgently need. And some of this stuff you may not necessarily need, uh, you don't necessarily need immediately. There are more important things to get. We can talk, we can talk about that at a different time. Um, number three is I'm going to include links for every single product that I use in the description of the video below. So if you decide there's something that I have that you want to buy, go ahead and do so. Full disclosure, I am a member of the Amazon Associates affiliate program. So if you click those links to make those purchases, you're actually supporting me and the channel because I do get a small portion of the purchase. So if you do that, awesome. If you don't do that, no big deal. You're not obligated to, but I figured I'd let you know. So let's go ahead and start. So I'm going to start with probably uh, one of my most important pieces of equipment. One of my favorite pieces of gear is my microphone. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Rode Procaster microphone. It ran me $229. This right here is the best microphone I have ever used to date. This is a dynamic broadcast microphone. It is absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. It sounds great. It is heavy as hell. You can use it to hurt somebody if you wanted to, which I do not recommend or condone, but you can do it if you needed to. And along with it, because it is a dynamic microphone, it does need a little bit of help in the gain department. So I went ahead and picked up a FET head for it too, which is a, a preamp basically, if you will, uh, which cost me a hundred dollars. So 230 for the microphone, a hundred bucks for the FET head. And right now I have it running through my Focusrite Scarlet Solo audio interface, which ran me about $150 at Guitar Center uh, some time ago. Uh, the boom arm that I have, I don't remember exactly the brand of it, but I also got it at Guitar Center. One of the really cool things about this boom arm is that it has the XLR cable built into the actual arm itself. It's a 10 foot long cord and it's discreetly hidden inside of this metal rod right here. So there's no excessive amounts of cables just hanging around all over the place. Uh, I love this microphone. It is absolutely phenomenal. It does great work. Uh, just the raw sound by itself sounds incredible. And when you're watching this video and most of my other videos, what you hear is a little bit of post-processing involved and it sounds phenomenal with some posts. So uh, I love the microphone. I definitely think that this is a uh, uh, a great alternative to the Shure SM7B, which is a $400 microphone. But uh, this is how I get my audio, ladies and gentlemen. This is the majority of how I make my audio happen. Now, there are a couple other things that I use for my audio. So this mess of wires right here is my lapel microphone, my lavalier microphone. This is an Insignia branded microphone that I purchased from Best Buy for $49.99. Uh, there are certain situations in which I would use this. Uh, for instance, if you watched my uh, PlayStation 5 pre-order attempt video where I sat outside of GameStop and interviewed the people that were waiting there, uh, I used this microphone. I just simply pinned it right here to the inside of my shirt. There you go. You just clip it on right here and boom, there you go. It's a condenser microphone, so it does pick up a lot of noise from all around, which was a great thing to have when I was speaking to other people. Uh, nice little microphone, doesn't have the best quality in the world, but it's got pretty decent quality for what it is uh, required to have in its intended use. Okay, so the other thing that I use for audio occasionally, uh, and which I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of how to use this properly, is the shotgun microphone right here. And this is the Tackstar SGC 598. Uh, typically, you put this on top of a DSLR camera and you can use this to record audio better than the onboard camera microphone, right? Okay, so in order to use this Tackstar microphone, what I've actually gotten is I've gotten a microphone boom stand off of Amazon for roughly 20 bucks. 
the Tagstar microphone actually cost me $30. And I got a 10 foot extension audio cable, which was about 10 bucks as well. So altogether, uh, the whole package cost me roughly about $70 after shipping and handling. So in order to use this with my recordings, which I have a few times now, basically you set the whole setup outside of the frame of the camera by elevating this up about as high as it can go, tightening it up, maybe adjusting it down like this a little bit, right? And it's gonna show in here, but typically the result would be something along the lines of this, where the microphone is kind of aiming down towards my mouth or the audio source and we're good to go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so one of the things that I'm known for as far as my YouTube channel is concerned is my headset reviews. That's pretty much been the main form of content that I've been able to do that's been pretty successful as far as my channel is concerned. So of course, that means that I have a gaming headset that I use. Uh, occasionally, I do kind of rotate them in and out. I actually have another one on the way today that I'll be reviewing shortly. But as of right now, the headset that I'm using and one of my favorite headsets to date is the, the Razer Black Shark V2 headset right here. Now, this little thing right here ran me about 100 bucks. Okay, I've got this from Razer's website, the, I think about a week or so after it came out. Uh, it is it is hard to describe what this headset is because it has the the it has the ear cups of an open back headset, but it delivers the sound of a closed back headset. And basically, what this means is that uh, the ear cups usually when they're cloth ear cups, uh, I'm sorry, the ear pads usually when they're cloth material, uh, they're open back, which means that sound can easily get in and easily get out of your headset, right? Basically, making your sound stage a lot better, and you're able to hear better directional cues. However, closed back headsets are typically the ones that you see with the leather or pleather ear cups or ear pads. I'm sorry, and those uh, keep sound in and keep seen keep sound out as well. So your ambient noise, your environmental sounds, all that kind of stuff won't get into the headset, and the sounds from inside of your headset don't get out usually those headphones produce much better bass. Uh, this little headset right here is, I think, what I would be willing to call almost a hybrid of the two. And it also has a really damn good microphone. It's probably one of the best microphones I've seen on a gaming headset before. Uh, very comfortable, and it just sits perfectly on my dome at all times when I'm playing, creating content, or just watching uh, YouTube videos or Twitch streams while I'm using this to listen to it all. Okay, so the next thing I want to show y'all is what do I use to play? What kind of controllers or keyboard and mouse, etc. So when I feel like using a controller, um, I have the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller right here. Uh, I actually bought this controller just to kind of review it and test it out because I had actually owned the original series controller. This controller has like the perfect amount of weight on it. It has rubber grips all around the uh, handles over here on the front and on the back and on the sides, which make it a very comfortable controller to hold on to. The triggers right here do have some sort of texturized little bumps at the bottom, so you can kind of just make sure you're hitting the right thing. It does have trigger locks, so if I switch these, bomb these switches all the way down, the input registers a lot faster than it would under traditional means. So when I'm using a keyboard and mouse, I actually switched on over to Logitech a few months back. And I'm that kind of person that if I have a Logitech mouse, I have to have a Logitech keyboard. If I have a Razer mouse, I've got to have a Razer keyboard. I like to kind of keep things in brand as much as reasonably possible. And so for the mouse, I actually went with the G703 Lightspeed wireless gaming mouse. This little thing is incredibly comfortable for one, it fits perfectly in my hand. And based on the grip that I use when I game, uh, I use this grip right here. Some people use the claw and I use the whole palm, right? This is what I find to be more comfortable for me. This thing fits perfectly in my hand. And the most impressive thing about it is that its battery life is absolutely insane. I will have to probably charge this once every two to three weeks. Uh, the last time I charged this was about a week and a half ago, and it's currently sitting at 65% battery life. Uh, I love this mouse. It's incredibly responsive. I, I, I don't even notice any sort of latency with it being a wireless mouse whatsoever. On top of that, I actually also own the G513 mechanical keyboard from Logitech. Uh, it's just a standard issue mechanical keyboard. I really couldn't tell you much about what kind of switches they use. It's a nice sleek looking keyboard. It matches up the uh, light setup that I have with the mouse. You can sync everything with the Logitech software. It's very responsive. It's nice and clicky, but it's not too clicky. And it is very comfortable to use. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So when it comes to my displays and what I use to actually watch content or play video games or what have you, and how I, I guess you could say produce is I have a dual monitor setup. So the monitor on the right, right over here 
is a standard 1080p Dell monitor. I believe it is a 24 inch monitor that I got at Best Buy for about $150. This is the monitor that I use when I have OBS running, when I have Twitch open, if I'm looking at analytics while I'm streaming or anything like that, it's a secondary monitor. It's just there for efficiency and productivity, if you will. Uh, the monitor right here in the middle, this is my gaming monitor. So this is actually an LG 4K monitor that, um, that we got three or four years ago as part of a Valentine's Day gift for my wife. Uh, the monitor ran us about $500 and I have used it religiously ever since. It does not have HDR, but it is 4K. It is a beautiful monitor still to this date. Everything that I play looks absolutely crisp and clean on this thing without the HDR, of course. The black bar that you see right there is an LG sound bar. When I'm not using my headset, because I, sometimes I just don't feel like wearing one, I listen through all of my audio through the sound bar itself, which actually delivers some pretty good sound. Doesn't have the best bass in the world, but you don't really need bass for this kind of stuff at all times. So the LG monitor right there in the middle is a 27 inch monitor. It is the perfect size for what I want to do. The other piece of equipment that I have that's one of my favorite pieces of gear is the Elgato Stream Deck right here. And this little thing is probably one of the most important, one of the most facilitating pieces of equipment that I have. It cost me $129 at Best Buy back when I bought it. And what it does is that it basically allows me to gain control of OBS, of Twitch, uh, a bunch of other programs, just about any program really, uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay and a bunch of other things that I'm able to really control and command from this stream deck without having to worry about keyboard macros and keyboard inputs and commands because a lot of times I'm kind of an amateur to these kind of things but a lot of times when I'm trying to when I try to use my keyboard for commands to switch scenes in a game the inputs wouldn't register and it wouldn't switch anything so Elgato here made this device and it makes things so much more easier for example if I wanted to I can go ahead and go to my stream beginning scene by hitting one button scene i hit another button and there you go i think obs updated recently because all my stuff's jacked up again that's okay and let's say i need to take a break and step away for a moment i just simply hit another button i go to my brb scene or we can sit down and talk while i'm taking a break without actually stepping away from the stream and then finally once things are over and i'm ready to wrap up i just hit one more button right here So like if I hit up right here, I have a whole bunch of folders that you're going to hopefully see here in the corner. Uh, I've got one for OBS. I have one for Twitch, NVIDIA Shadowplay, Elgato. And then I have a couple of quick uh, launches for a couple of programs that I consistently use like Adobe Premiere Elements, GIMP, and Audacity. And one really cool thing is that it also has a plugin to show me how much battery life I have left in my mouse, which is a wireless mouse, volume controls, mic and mute controls, and a couple of other things as well. Anyways, uh, let's keep going. Got a couple more things to show y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and then last sort of, but certainly not least are my, is my video equipment and what do I use to get the video that you're seeing right now? So I actually own a Canon Rebel T7 DSLR camera, ran me about $400 that I got from Target a couple of months back. I actually about almost a year back, I got it. Um, I got their Canon Rebel camera. It comes with a stock lens that goes anywhere from 18 to 55 millimeters. Uh, and it actually is a pretty solid camera. Uh, I've been using it now for quite some time. If you've watched any of my YouTube videos within the last six months to one year, this is the camera that I've been using to shoot pretty much all of my content with the exception of a couple that I shot with my phone. Now, after a while of owning the camera, I figured, hey, I think I wanna swap out some lenses and get some better glass for my camera. And that's exactly what I did. The first lens that I purchased was this 50 millimeter lens right here for my uh, camera. This one ran me about $150. Uh, this is actually a beautiful lens to shoot through. However, you can't really adjust the, uh, you can't zoom in or out. It is a fixed lens. So 50 millimeters is where it sits. It doesn't change at all, but this thing shoots some very beautiful, crisp, clean footage. I love it. And then for video, uh, when I'm actually recording myself, because right now I'm using the kit lens just to kind of catch more of the background. But when I'm not using my kit lens and I'm not using the 50 millimeter lens to record me, what I often use is the pancake lens or the 24 millimeter 
lens that I have here from my Rebel T7. This one ran me about $125 at Best Buy. And this is primarily the one lens that I always use because it shoots great footage in terms of video and it can shoot some very beautiful pictures as well. Uh, I love this lens and I do use them interchangeably depending on what it is that I'm trying to accomplish like right now. I didn't want to have the camera all in my face like this, right? I didn't want the frame to be that close. I wanted you to be able to see everything that's going on in the background or so because this is right here, all a part of the setup as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are practically down to the very last piece of equipment. The one piece that binds us all, my computer. Now I'm not going to show you my computer for two reasons. Number one, my cable management is absolutely atrocious and it is embarrassing and I don't need your judgment. Besides, I'm also in the process of buying a house and when I move into the new house with my wife and my babies, I'll take care of my cable management. I promise I'll send you pictures just so you can validate. The other reason I'm not going to show you my PC is because it's actually located underneath my desk. It is not sitting on my desk. You see, a lot of times, you're going to see streamers and YouTubers who have their computers on the desk. And chances are you probably have your PC on your desk as well. And that's fine to an extent. But the reason I have my computer underneath my desk is because this eliminates the, the amount of noise that my microphones pick up from the PC fans or any sort of PC noise that comes along, right? By keeping it underneath my desk, I have a desk that acts as a layer of block that acts as a layer that blocks the sound from getting into my microphone. Right, and anybody out there who does have their PC on their desk and you really want to get good, crisp, clean audio, one of the first things you need to do is take your PC and move it underneath your desk. The PC that I have, I actually purchased, I want to say back in 2015 or so. And I bought the PC from CyberPower PC. It is a pre-built PC, okay? It wasn't something that I built on my own. I was too chicken, too afraid that I'd mess something up. And so I bought it, uh, it was around Father's, Father's Day, which I actually got it on sale for about $1,500, okay, plus tax. But we'll call it 1,500. At the time, the PC came with an Intel i7 6800K processor, an NVIDIA 1070 Founders Edition graphics card, 32 gigs of RAM, a gigabit motherboard, and of course, the power supply units and the other things here and there, right? Uh, up until recently, that's what I was rolling with, but I want to say before the summer started, I actually upgraded lots of components on my PC. So I upgraded the motherboard, the graphics card, the processor, and of course I had to upgrade my power supply unit as well. So what I bought is I went ahead and got the Asus B450F gaming motherboard. I got a Ryzen 7 2700X processor, a gigabit nvidia 2070 super graphics card and a corsair power supply unit to go with it the ram is still the same i still have 32 gigs of ram and all the other miscellaneous components are still the same uh, i did add an extra corsair fan to it just to make sure everything would work and be cool and other than that that is it that is my computer that is my setup it's not rgb'd out i don't believe in all that nonsense uh, the rgb is nice on your keyboard and your mouse but my pc doesn't need rgb for any reason whatsoever um, and it's a great PC, it's a great build. It handles streaming perfectly fine. It handles recording for YouTube perfectly fine. It handles rendering videos and editing videos perfectly fine. And I can play just about any game on Ultra or Max. Uh, about 58, 59, some 60 frames a second, depending on the resolution I pick. If I pick 4K, I'm hitting 55. If I pick 1440, I'm hitting 60 or more. I love the PC, it's phenomenal. It's one of my favorite purchases that I've made within the last decade. Uh, definitely, definitely hardcore PC gamer here. Uh, and of course console too, but other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is all the equipment that I own. That's all the equipment that I use. Uh, if you have any questions about the gear, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I have links to everything in the description below. Until next time, thank you for everything. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Thank you for all my old subscribers. Thank you for all the support and wonderful comments that y'all make. Thank you for being you. Most important of all things though, be good to yourselves, be good to one another. Peace out.